morning everybody and welcome to our morning prayer on Friday the 29th of January. We'll continue through that season of Epiphany and we're going to use just our morning prayer liturgy uh, as just available in the apps from the App Store on Apple, Android, I'm sure other great things as well. Or even the old fashioned books, old fashioned, heck. But uh, great, great to have you with us as we start this day, committing ourselves and committing this day in prayer, in reflection, and just setting up this day as intentionally bringing God into it. So great to have you join us. I'm gonna follow through the liturgy reasonably loosely, uh, but I'll kind of give some instructions as we go along. So let's start. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the worlds. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And then our song of joy. O be joyful in the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are the people, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. So glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, so the hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So there's normally multiple psalms. So our first one is Psalm 61. Our second is Psalm 65. So I'll just do our first one and I'll include the refrain at the right points. So Psalm 61. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with fainting heart. You have set me on the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever, and take refuge in the cover of your wings. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. For you, O God, will hear my vows. You will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king, that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name, and day by day fulfil my vows. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. As in Christ, as you knew the disciple of suffering and the victory that brings us salvation, so grant us your presence in our weakness and a place in your unending kingdom, now and forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So our Old Testament. Uh, let's have a look. Should we do the old and the new? <clears throat> let's do the old. I often skip the olds. We're going to do the olds and skip the new for a change. Um, 
because I do love the Old Testament, really do, uh, but I sometimes just skip over for brevity. But uh, let's do Hosea 6, verse, sorry, hey, Hosea chapter 6, verse 7, to chapter 7, verse 2. So starting at Hosea 6, verse 7. But at Adam they transgressed the covenants, there they dealt faithlessly with me. Gilead is a city of evildoers, tracked with blood, as robbers lie in wait for someone, so the priests are banded together. They murder on the road to Shechem, they commit a monstrous crime. In the house of Israel I have seen a horrible thing, Ephraim's whoredom is there. Israel is defiled. For you also, O Judah, a harvest is appointed. When I would restore the fortunes of my people, when I would heal Israel, the corruption of Ephraim is revealed, and the wicked deeds of Samaria, for they deal falsely. The thief breaks in, and the bandits raid outside. But they do not consider that I remember all their wickedness, now their deeds surround them, they are before my face. And then I'm going to do our canticle as well. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by night nor by day. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, no moonlight shine upon you, but the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendour, for you should be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. If you don't want to read the New Testament, then it's 1 Corinthians 11. 17 to the end but i'm going to skip over that and i'm going to skip over the responsory and i'm going to skip over the benedictus and let's pray Father, we give you thanks for this new day. Lord, help each one of us in this day to be mindful of your presence, those divine opportunities and nudges that you might give us in a response to your grace and mercy. Father, to either set aside time to just praise and worship you, or to make contact with somebody as a means of encouraging them. Father, lead us by your Holy Spirit, we ask. Father, we are, of course, mindful of the ongoing challenges and devastation that so many people face for the ongoing restrictions and the pandemic. For businesses devastated, for those frontline workers just holding it together, for those struggling with isolation and loneliness, for the so many parts of our community and our fabric seemingly torn apart. Your Lord, in the midst of all of this, we know that you are at work. And so, Lord, we pray. We pray for those frontline workers that each of us know, and we name them by name before you, O oh Lord. We 
We pray for those involved in the distribution, the manufacturing of our vaccines. And Lord, you would just help with all the practical, all the logistics, all the politics involved in this. We thank you, Lord, that so many have now received with great joy the first injection and some even their second. Lord, thank you that there is hope on the horizon and there are many lessons to be learned. We pray for our governments and local authorities in impossible times with impossible decisions to be made. Grant them wisdom, O oh Lord, we pray. We pray for your church, not just ours here within Rayleigh, but Lord, your church, universal and national. And help us to be bold and courageous as we discern what you are doing and what you want us to do. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, we ask. Lord, we pray for all those who mourn, particularly mindful in our own church family of those who we have sadly lost in recent days and in these past 11 to 12 months. We pray for their family and friends, that you would comfort and console, O oh Lord, for our wider community struggling of the loss of those dear to them, for our undertakers who are overwhelmed and emotionally stretched. Be with them, O oh Lord, we pray. For all those conducting the funerals, particularly fellow ministers, not only in our parish, but in other parishes too. Sustain them, O Lord, in your merciful goodness. And for each one of us, help us to have an awareness of your presence, the strengthening of your Holy Spirit, and a confidence in your goodness. So, merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so to our collect for this day. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so, believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us, using the contemporary Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So all those who are joining us this day, please do keep safe, keep in contact with one another and do keep close to God in prayer and the study of his word. So bless you. And I look forward to seeing you all at some point soon. God bless. Bye bye.